What's up, guys? You can check out our podcast, articles, or our full proxy gallery all at our brand new website, www.itresolvesmtg.com. What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the Crack of Pack series. I hope you all are doing exceptionally well. I'm doing very, very well myself today. Uh, we are opening up a pack of Battle for Zendikar. Um, not the most exciting set in the world, but still some really cool mechanics, a few really, really interesting cards. Uh, Gideon here we see on the pack art, one of the most uh, awesome Planeswalkers, I think, for a lot of reasons. Uh, and so I'm actually really excited to get into this. Uh, we will, of course, go through this as if we're drafting the set, so we will hopefully be able to figure out what our pack one pick one will be. Uh, as such, we'll go through every card, and our first one here is Alter's Reap. It's an instant for one and a black. As an, as an additional cost to cast it, you do have to sacrifice a creature, but you do draw two cards. So uh, what I found with this in Limited is it's actually a perfectly fine draw spell. A lot of people would think that because you're sacrificing a creature, it's kind of bad. Uh, not always the case. A lot of times you'll find yourself in a position where you can block with one of your, uh, you know, one ones or two twos or something like that, something bigger, chump blocking it. Uh, and then in response to damage, uh, or excuse me, before damage, uh, instant, uh, instant speed, play this out, sacrifice the creature, draw a couple cards off of it, still save yourself the damage, but also still get two cards off of it. That's kind of the worst case scenario. So that actually tends to work out pretty well. Uh, that being said, it's not an amazing card. It's something that you pick up mid to late pack. If you happen to be in black, other than that, definitely not a first pick. <laughs> Uh, Plummet is a very classic card. It's an instant for one and a green and very simply destroy target creature with flying. Uh, depending on the set that this finds itself in, generally speaking, you can main deck like one of these and it's pretty good. Uh, sometimes too, again, 100% dependent on what you're, what set you're actually drafting in. In this set, I don't necessarily think you can main deck more than one of these. Uh, even one is a little bit sketchy, but generally speaking, somebody or some creature in a deck is going to have flying, so you usually find a target for it. It just happens to be that a lot of times it's a dead card. Uh, I don't 100% love this as a first pick either. Uh, it's not super powerful. It is removal, which is good, but it's very, very conditional, and unfortunately that makes it a little bit less playable than a lot of other removals. So... I'm going to keep it here for now, but the assumption is that we will hopefully do better than this uh, throughout the rest of the pack. Uh, Coral Helm Guide is a 2-1 for 1 and a blue, and you can pay 4 and a blue, and target creature can't be blocked this turn. So uh, this is actually a fairly okay uh, kind of utility creature. It is a little expensive, but making something unblockable like your big bomb is going to be really, really good for hopefully winning the game quickly. Uh, and what you find is while this isn't necessarily amazing on its own, uh, it's one of those cards that it's a two, one for two. So it's going to be fine to play, uh, just for a two, one for two. But if you happen to find yourself in a situation where that ability comes in handy, which most of the time you will, uh, it's going to be really, really good. So I actually like this card. I don't think again, it's going to be our first pick, but I definitely think so far it's the best pick. Uh, Myers Malice is a sorcery for three and a black target opponent discards two cards. And then this has awaken three, which was a really cool mechanic. So if you pay five and a black, uh, you also put three one, one counters on target land you control, and it becomes a zero, zero elemental creature with haste. Uh, it is still land, so you can still tap it for mana. Uh, but basically what the awaken mechanic did was give you a little bit of extra utility on cards that you would probably play anyway. Now this obviously kind of a lower tier awaken card. It's not amazing by any means, but I could definitely see playing this in a black kind of uh, tempo control style deck. Being able to, to uh, plunder your, your opponent's resources is always really, really good. Uh, and then on top of that, if you get this late game, being able to draw into a creature as well is great. So I don't like hate this card. I think I'd still have the guide over it, but uh, awaken very, very powerful mechanic. Hopefully we'll see a little bit more of it through this pack. Uh, McKendy Patrol uh, is a 2-3 for 2 and a white. It has Rally, so whenever it or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control gain Vigilance until the end of the turn. Uh, rally was ally focused, uh, uh, was an ally focused mechanic. Uh, basically, there was kind of like an all colors ally deck that you could get. Uh, it was a little bit tricky if you were drafting. It was a little bit harder to do, but maybe in sealed, it's a little bit more uh, your speed because you get 
hopefully a few more options and things like that. Uh, I don't love that deck. I tend not to go for it in this set because it is a little bit tricky. Uh, it's sort of like a sliver deck. It's one of those things where you, you can get really, really good upside, but you have no idea what you're going to open. And so it's a little bit tricky. I would rather have like a big bomb for that deck before taking this. Uh, Lava Step Raider is a 1-2 for 1 red. Already not bad, uh, but you can pay 2 in a red and it gets plus 2 plus 0 until the end of the turn. So I actually like this card. It's fairly aggressive. Uh, it's a 1-2 for 1, so it's going to be a little bit overstatted for your 1 drop. Obviously, you can't bank on always playing it on 1, but it does have the ability to scale up with power, which is kind of nice. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily better than the guide, but I do think that it's probably kind of on par with something that the guide could do. Uh, I think it's fine. It's not amazing. Again, probably not going to be the first pick, uh, and I don't think it's better than the guide, so I'm going to stick with that for now. Uh, Sheer Drop is a sorcery for two and a white. Destroy target tapped creature. And then this also has Awaken three for five and a white. So this is the kind of card we're looking for. It's much more, uh, le well, I'll say less conditional removal in that it can hit much more uh, in terms of creatures with just flying, no flying, whatever. It hits everything as long as they're tapped. Uh, and so I like that quite a lot. <coughs> Excuse me. On top of that, you can also swing the game in your favor with that Awaken cost. So if you happen to be able to drop uh, a few extra mana into this and get a three drop out of it, it's on point. Definitely a very good card and definitely better than anything that we have so far. Uh, Kozilek's Channeler is a 4-4 four four for five of any color, and you can tap it and add two to your mana pool. So... Uh, normally I will say this mana dorks like this. I don't love, uh, when they're very expensive. However, this is an Eldrazi focused set and a lot of the cards are just really expensive and having something like this enables you to do quite a lot. Uh, that being said, is it better than Sheer Drop? I don't know hundred percent. I think it kind of depends on the deck you're going for. Uh, what's nice about the channeler is it's really, really good in any deck, uh, because obviously it is ramp. Uh, but it also is colorless, which means it's going to fit into any deck. You're not uh, kind of pigeonholed into white or in any other, in another card's case, any other color. Uh, and so I actually like it a lot for that reason. It also does just ramp you, which is great. Uh, I think I'm going to keep them together for now. We'll see what we get in the rest of the pack. I don't expect that these are going to necessarily be our first uh, picks here, but both are actually okay. I would I would be okay picking these up. Uh, McKendy Side Runner. Is a 2 1 for 1 and a red. It has trample and it has landfall. So, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, it gets plus 1 plus 1 until the end of the turn. Uh, landfall was a really, really powerful mechanic. One, because it's very easy to trigger, but two, you're getting a bonus off of cards uh, or off of playing the deck that you're going to be doing no matter what. You're going to be playing lands always. So, it's actually really, really nice to just get a little bit of a buff off of that. Uh, this being a really aggro focused card is great. Uh, it's really, really nice for draft because you want to be very aggro focused generally. Uh, that being said, I find it you really, really have to go aggro in this set because there are so many big uh, kind of stompy bombs with the, the Eldrazi in this set. So it tends to be a little bit trickier, but you can definitely pull it off. Uh, and this is a good two drop for that deck. I don't think it's better than the other cards that we have, uh, but I do like it quite a lot if you find yourself in that aggro deck. Uh, Courier Griffin is a 2-3 three for 3 and a white. It has flying, and when it enters the battlefield, you gain 2 life. Uh, pretty straightforward card, perfectly playable. Uh, it's not amazing by any means, but it is an evasive threat, which I like. The, the extra 2 life, not amazing, but again, it's nice. It's a little bit of a buff to your life total for those aggro matchups and things like that, so... It's fine. It's not amazing. Uh, again, I think we've got some better options here, but uh, I would be perfectly happy picking this up kind of mid to late pack. I think it's perfectly fine there. Uh, our first uncommon is Skyrider Elf. It's a 0-0 flying uh, with, for X, a green, and a blue. Uh, it enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each color of mana spent to cast it. That's the converge mechanic. Uh, that was basically to encourage you to go into multicolor strategies, play a lot of different colors. Uh, and it was actually easier to do in this set because of all the, all the Eldrazi being, uh, a lot of them, I should say, being colorless completely. Uh, it made it really easy to splash certain colors versus just having to go all in on like one or two. Uh, and so I actually really like this card. The fact that it's flying is really, really nice. Uh, it's automatically going to be a 2-2 flyer, uh, and you don't have to 
I guess technically, yeah, you don't have to, to uh, spend anything on X and it's just a 2-2 two -two flyer. Uh, so I actually really like this. I think this beats out the other stuff that we've got. Uh, if you find yourself in a three, four, or five color deck even, uh, this just gets better and better, to be honest. So I actually really like this card. Definitely a very, very strong threat. Uh, Processor Assault is a sorcery for one and a red. It features Devoid, so it technically doesn't have a color. Uh, yes, it does have a color in the CMC, but it doesn't have a color in any mechanics of the card, which is really interesting. Uh, as an additional cost to cast it, put a card uh, an opponent owns from exile into that player's graveyard. And then Processor Assault deals 5 damage to target creature. Uh, actually very easy to do uh, the opponent's uh, exiled into their graveyard kind of clause for this. Uh, a lot of times there are cards that uh, kind of eat cards on top of the deck and put them into exile. Uh, and so it's actually really, really nice to be able to pull those out uh, because a lot of times you can kind of do a little bit of mechanic shenanigans with that. Uh, so five damage is actually huge. It is a very, very good removal spell. I got to be honest, I don't know if it's better than the Skyrider Elf only because that card scales so, so well. Uh, but that being said, Processor Assault does deal with it. So it is a little bit tricky uh, to evaluate these. I think I would go for the creature over the spell here. Uh, it's better to have a lot of creatures, in my opinion, in limited. Uh, granted, removal spells are great, don't get me wrong, but uh, you're going to win the game most often with creatures. So making sure that you have creatures your opponent has to answer, I think is much, much better in general. And so that's what I'm going to go with here. Uh, it is multicolor, so that does kind of pigeonhole you a little bit more than uh, Processor Assault, so just keep that in mind. But again, basing off of the set that we're in, I don't think it's that difficult, so I'm okay with it. Uh, our last uncommon is Blighted Woodland. Uh, it's a land and it taps for one generic mana. This is, this is, these are actually part of a cycle, if I'm not mistaken. There's one for every color, but uh, you can pay three and a green, tap it, sacrifice it, search your library for up to two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped, and then you shuffle your library. Uh, what's actually really nice about this is it goes very, very well with the Skyrider Elf. Uh, and if we were drafting, there is some uh, amount of confidence that this would actually wheel uh, because it isn't a great card by itself, but it does help you in that converge deck because it fetches out two basic lands of any uh, kind. So you can actually get your one of mountain or your one of plains if you need it uh, to help up the Skyrider elf if you needed to. So I actually like cards like this uh, or lands like this, I should say, that kind of give you some utility. It is worth noting that it does just tap for one generic mana. It doesn't produce green on its own, which is not amazing. But uh, for a mid to late game pickup, I think it's very, very good to have some of these utility lands. Uh, so definitely consider those if you happen to find yourself drafting this set. Uh, and then our rare here is Veteran War Leader. Uh, star Star for one, a green, and a white. Uh, its power and toughness are equal to the number of creatures you control. And tap another untapped ally you control, and it gains your choice of First Strike, Vigilance, or Trample until the end of the turn. Very, very difficult to pass up on a card like this. It actually goes very well with the Skyrider Elf and a couple of the other cards that we saw in this pack. Uh, I would, I have to say, this is just a better card in my opinion. Uh, it does have a higher upside. It's going to be easier to scale up and just play, uh, which I like. Uh, and so I'm going to have to say this is just a better pick. It's, it is uh, not necessarily good on its own. It is just kind of a 1-1 one -one, uh, by itself. So you do have to make sure you're playing an abundance of creatures when you're drafting a card like this. But for the ally deck, this is definitely one of the flagship cards and definitely a card that you're going to want uh, for, for drafting that. So this is a reason to be in allies. This is definitely the card I think I would pick. Uh, we do have our beautiful full art mountain. I love the full art lands and then our Eldrazi Scion token. But I think that's my pick, guys. If you have uh, any disagreements, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Back episode.